Two mill buildings stood on this location from the early 1700s to the early 1900s. They depended on Tibbetts Brook, which was dammed to drive two large water wheels to provide power. One of these mill buildings was a sawmill where fallen trees could be cut into lumber. The other building was a grist mill, or a mill for grinding grain into flour. Before the American Revolution, an enslaved African man named Piero worked as the miller here. Not only would Piero have milled grains grown on the plantation, neighboring farmers would have brought their own crops here to be milled for a fee. Since Piero was a skilled worker, the Van Cortlands profited mightily from exploiting his labor. Piero's wife, Hester, and son, Peter, were both enslaved by the Van Cortlands, and the family may have slept here in the mill building. Other enslaved black people on the plantation, such as Hannah, Sari, Klaus, and Frank, probably did not have the same privilege of living as a family unit. They were sent off to live with various relatives of the Van Cortlands after the death of Frederick Van Cortland in 1749. The story of Piero highlights an overlooked fact. The enslaved Africans of New York performed a variety of skilled occupations that were essential to the local economy and built the wealth of this state in its infancy. After slavery was outlawed in New York State in 1827, the mills continued in operation under the stewardship of a paid employee of the Van Cortland family. After the area became a park, the mills were struck by lightning and burned down in the early 1900s.